Electric hand planers, are they any good? What do I use it for? How do I use it? I'm Travis, this is how I do things. Let's dig into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess by now, you've been all over YouTube just watching dudes just tear it up with one of these old school hand planers. Well, it's not really as easy as they make it look. First off, this is actually my great grandpa's planner, which is kind of cool. And mine's not nearly as sharp as what you've seen in some of those videos. It's important to know that unless you have a razor sharp blade in this thing that can basically shave the hair off your arm, you're not gonna get the same results that you've been seeing all over YouTube. Some might even say it takes just as much skill to sharpen one of these as it does to actually use one. So if you're newer to woodworking or you just don't wanna take the time to master an old school hand planer like that, an electric hand planer might be what you're looking for. Who makes electric hand planers and how much do they cost? Most of your major manufacturers that you'll find at your local big box store will carry electric hand planers and you can typically find one between $80 and $180. My planer is made by Makita and I put an Amazon link in the video description. By the way, when you buy something through one of my Amazon links, you help support my channel so I can keep making cool videos like this. Now let's talk about some of the basic parts of an electric hand planer. If we flip this thing over, the first thing we'll see is this movable front shoe. If we turn this dial right here, we can adjust the depth of cut. Turning it clockwise will take more material off. Turning it counterclockwise will take less material off. You may also notice that the front shoe has a V groove cut into it. That's to make quick chamfer cuts and I'll demonstrate that later. And then back here, we have the fixed rear shoe. It's the difference in height between the front shoe and the rear shoe that determine how much bite the blade has. And while we're talking about the blade, here is the cutter head that holds two blades that are both double sided. That way you can actually flip one if one of them gets damaged or dull. It should go without saying, but if you're gonna be looking at the bottom of your electric planer like I am right now, always unplug it. My Makita spins at 17,000 RPM and it removes wood very quickly and it removes skin just as efficiently. <laughs> you can tell I learned this one by experience. Keep the cord away from this thing, as well as rags, loose clothing, or long hair. This small spring-loaded stand on the bottom helps protect your cutting blades and the workpiece if you set it down accidentally while the blade is still spinning. It also moves out of the way automatically when you start making your cut. That spring-loaded kickstand is a really cool little feature, but it's still always a great idea to make sure the blade stops spinning before you set your planer back down. On this hand planer, the power trigger is located right here and it's actuated like this. This button above it is not a safety switch, it's actually a lock for the trigger to reduce hand fatigue. Most electric hand planers will also come with one of these. This is an edge fence. On this unit, the edge fence just slides into this hole and can be tightened down with this adjustment knob. This fence is fantastic for when you're trying to stabilize a cut on a narrow board. This edge fence can also be used to make long rabbit cuts. And these little holes right here are so you can attach a board to it for even more stability. But how do I use an electric hand planer? I think this place is haunted. Before you get started, it's always a good idea to check your blades and make sure they're aligned properly. If they're not, it is possible for one side to cut a little lower than the other. To change or adjust the blades in my Makita, I first grab this included wrench and remove these bolts. Then remove the drum cover, set plate, and blade. Be careful because the blades are very sharp. Once you have everything out, this is a good time to clean all the components. I just use an old toothbrush. If your blade is dull, flip it or grab a new blade and set it in the gauge that came with your planer. Butt it up against the gauge plate. Now loosen the screws on the set plate. If you look at the back of the set plate, you'll notice features that hold the blade in place. Place those features on top of the blade and then push the adjustment heel in until it is against the back side of the gauge. Then tighten the screws. Now place the blade on the drum like this, and then place the set plate on top of it. The heel should go into the groove on the drum. Now install the cover and loosely install the three bolts. Make sure the blade is properly seated in the features on the back of the set plate and that it is centered from side to side. Tighten the three bolts and then manually rotate the drum to make sure the blade clears the housing. Then just repeat on the other blade. Now that our blades are all sharp and adjusted, we're ready to start planing something. First securely clamp your board down and then make sure that the area is clear of any loose clothing or long hair. Be sure to carefully inspect your board for any nails or staples. The planer blades do not like metal. Be sure the entire area underneath the board is clear so you won't trip when you're making your cut. Now hold the tool firmly with one hand on the knob and the other hand on the handle. Start by putting just the front shoe on the workpiece without the blades touching. 
You should be keeping more pressure on the front of the planer when starting your cut. Then bring the motor to full speed and gently move the planer along the workpiece while trying to maintain a steady pace. You should be using balanced pressure while you're in the middle of your cut. At the end of the workpiece, put pressure on the back of the planer to prevent the nose from diving down. As soon as the blades are through the wood, bring the planer up off the workpiece. When you put all of that together, it should look something like this. You can take quite a bit of material off in a single pass, but if you're looking for smoother cuts, it's best to take small passes and just remove a little wood at a time. If you don't use this method, it's very easy to take a bite or snipe out of the workpiece at the start or end of your cut. Nobody wants that. What can I use a planer for? Where is that coming from? Electric hand planers can be used for a lot of things, including joining two boards together, fixing a sticking door, and removing the bow from a board. To straighten a bowed piece of wood, first mark the location of the highest spot, then make a short pass where the highest spot is, then make a longer pass, and then make a full pass. Repeat these steps until the bow is gone. To add a chamfer, all you need to do is put the V on the corner to chamfer, and then use the planer normally. Obviously, you need to keep a steady hand, but the neat thing is that you can vary the angles. Sometimes I'll even use my electric hand planer for cleaning up the transitions on a glue up before sanding. Are they any good compared to a manual hand planer? Oh, there it goes again. I sort of consider an electric hand planer and a manual hand planer to be two totally different tools. There are some things that they can both do, but I think it's nice to have both of them in your shop. So yeah, in the end, I would say that electric hand planers do have a purpose and they are good at doing certain things, which I outlined in this video. But you need to be really careful because a powered hand planer can take off a lot of material very quickly. And it's a lot easier to take it off than it is to put it back on. I've seen some other builders out there make some really cool jigs for their electric hand planers. You can make a portable jointer or you can make a jig for flattening large slabs. They sound pretty interesting to me. If they sound cool to you and you'd like to see me try and make one, please leave that in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching my entire video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, please hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out one of these other awesome videos over here, but you guys need to get out of here because I made a giant mess and I need to clean this up. I'll see you guys. Most electric hand planers will also come with one of these. This is a... Good Lord, this is a lot of sawdust. <sighs> Gotta love the hand planers.